good groove. Hello again, everybody. Lance Russell and Dave Brown right along ringside and son of a gun. We are ready. What a host of names. Huh? Boy, I tell you what, we've got Joe LaDuke in here for the main event today. But before we get to that, we have the teams of the Nightmares and the Beach Boys going against each other. We'll have Buddy Landell, Dutch Mantell teamed up today as a tag team. We'll have the Mod Squad teamed with Fire and Flame. Can you imagine the size over a thousand pounds? in an eight-man tag team match on the same side of the ring. Lawler teamed with a giant hillbilly. Paul Diamond will be here much more today. Just a whole bunch. Hey, and we got some big news for you. Uh, because of the situation that has happened the last couple of weeks in the uh, Southern Heavyweight title matches the, between Landell and Dundee, uh, it has been declared by mutual agreement between the AWA and Eddie Marlin, uh, the promoter, that there cannot be a match that is going to be without some kind of outside interference. They have declared the belt open. The belts were already held up. The belts have been declared open, and there will be a one-night night tournament to establish the Southern Heavyweight right. Crown, a very, very important crown indeed, and we'll have more about that later on. Right now, we better take time out. we got a bunch to get in. We'll be back in a moment. plenty of action to go and by golly I'll tell you our opening match is going to be a dandy the nightmares here they come right now Ken Wayne Danny Davis they are Dave Brown, we're back. outfitted in their unusual hair what do you mean unusual this is not unusual we wear this every day seven days a week ah. everywhere we go we look like this because we want to be recognized we told you we were coming. We didn't want to be like the rest of these Yahoo wrestlers around here, and we darn sure didn't want to look like none of these geeks. So we come up with something different. That's why we look the way we do. We want to be different. We want to be recognized. The greatest tag team that have ever put on a face or a hairspray, and that's the Nightmares. Tell them, partner. Well, the first uh, week back in, you guys have uh, lived up to your billing coming in. You know, that's right. We lived up to it for one reason, one reason only, because we are... The greatest tag team in the world today. Now, the shut up over there. You know, we come in here and we told everyone that we'll one day get the titles from these guys here. We are the uncrowned champions of the area. You understand that, don't you? I hear what you're saying. Everyone knows in their heart and in their minds we are the true champions. We are the best team, not here, not in the state, but in the world today. That's right. And we're going to go in the ring, we're going to prove it day in, day out. Because you know, Lance Russell, for seven years, Danny Davis and Ken Wayne have been together, and we have put together the most impressive records yes. in the history of wrestling. And we're going to go in the ring here in just a minute, and we're going to put another win on well, that, baby. You've got a snappy little bout here with okay. the beach. We're not going to take another way to the beach. We're not going to use it. things that they do and uh, they're ready to do some more of that against the young team of the Beach Boys. Dave. Yeah we saw them greeting the fans over there the Beach Boys John Stewart and uh, Van Van Horn. They're in the ring right now they're wrestling out of California the, the Nightmare is wrestling out of wherever they want to I guess. Nightmare's total weight 422 pounds. The Beach Boys weigh in at a total of 458. Uh, got some uh, some good size on them. Van Van Horn especially be the heavier of the two. Looks like he's going to be starting the match for his team. And across the way, it will be Ken Wayne starting for the team of the Nightmares. Off and running with tag team action. Jerry Calhoun, the referee, will try to keep things uh, in order in there. Van Van Horn down on the mat. Van Horn gets the headlock on Ken Wayne, and the Nightmare finds himself in a bit of trouble here early in the match. Oh. Well, that's one thing about the Nightmares team. They, they will get out of trouble like that. They'll use the uh, fist, the open hand, whatever it takes. Danny Davis in there now. The Beach Boys make a tag too, and here comes John Stewart. Both the Beach Boys send Davis into the ropes. Stewart got him with the upper arm. And Van Horn stepped outside. 
So it's Stewart against Davis. Over to the corner. The tag. And Van Horn with a little sidekick. Put it right in the ribcage. Danny Davis. Again, though, the victim of a good move by the Beach Boys. Van Horn. A nice bar on the arm. And the way he, he had it pretty good. Davis took him back to the ropes. And look out. Ken Wayne from outside on the apron. Got him with a knee in the small of the back. Danny Davis grabbed him immediately as he fell into the ring. Now he's got him up in the air. The body slam. Davis makes the tag. And here is Ken Wayne. And officially now. You know, Dave, I wonder often in listening to guys. Here's the greatest team in the uh, tag team in the country by their own admission. Why they have to resort to doing stuff like that. Uh, but boy, they will do it time after time. They do take the shortcuts. Davis. Feeling the right hand. And Horn over to the corner and makes the tag on John Stewart. Well, they're sure not going against the pushover team here, let me tell you, in this Beach Boy team. The Nightmares found themselves a match. Stewart off the rope. Look out, Danny, uh, Ken Wayne trips him from outside. Danny Davis now picks him up. There's a body slam. The referee trying to get Van Horn back outside. Ooh. Meanwhile, Ken Wayne came flying through the air. There's the cover. He came off the top rope. Count is a two, three. And Davis was holding Van Horn out of the action across the way. It's double team all the way, but the victory goes to Ken Wayne, Danny Davis, the Nightmares. Here's what happened. As uh, Ken Wayne was up on, you see him on that top rope, and he comes flying halfway across the ring. All that momentum. And he nailed him, looked like right in the top of the head. Speared him right there with a the head coming down off it, and he really put him out. One, two, three, and that was all she wrote as far as the Beach Boys. The rough and tough nightmares win a nothing. Another one. I was looking over here, looking at, uh, speaking of rough and tough, I was watching Bill Dundee come in, and here he is today. Oh, no. You ain't getting away with this. Now let me tell all you rednecks something out there. Let me tell you, and I want you to listen good. Because this week in the wrestling business, the biggest conspiracy wrestling you it went down. The wrestling office of this territory is in Cumberland Hills, Tennessee, in a great big mansion, in a great big office. They got a big marble top desk. They got seats down one side. They got seats down the other side. And that wimp, Jerry Jarrett, sits in a great big seat up the back of it. And all these stooges sit down the side, Daddy. And let me tell you who they were this week. Buddy Landale, Jerry Lawler, Eddie Marlin, Dutch Mantel. Every idiot in the wrestling business is up there. And they're all saying, we can't beat him, Jerry. We can't beat him. And Eddie Marlin, he's just sitting there nodding off, pop off to sleep. Somebody would wake him up and say, wake up, old man. He said, well, I don't know what we're going to do, King. He's got the belt. We don't know what we're going to do. So they trumped up some idiot excuse to have a tournament. And you know what the biggest thing was, Russell? You know what they were first going to do? I wasn't even in it. So they were going to have a tournament, take my belt that nobody could beat me for, and leave me out. Then Jerry Jarrett says, oh, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. See this farm in this big house? He loaded in a lawsuit. We can't steal his belt off him, have a tournament, and then not let him in it. And not only that, Lance Russell, you agreed to everything that they did. Hey, come on, Bill. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Jerry Lawler, you ain't seen the day you can beat me because you admitted it to Jarrett. And Buddy Landell admitted it. And that hairy Ed Mantell admitted it. And Eddie Marlin said, I don't know what we're going to do. The superstar's the best there is. You're damn tootin' I'm the best there is, Marlin. And you got my belt. And you're having some silly tournament. And you wasn't going to let me in it. Well, I'm in it, Jack. And when it's all over, Lawler's going to eat his words. Landell and Mantell and every idiot in this territory it's going to say that's right, we can't beat him, because I'm going to win it, Russell. Well, that's your explanation of it, Bill. The simple fact of the matter is they were never able to have a match when there wasn't a whole lot of interference. Did I ever get beat? And if you say it wrong, I'm going to slap you. Oh, it's going to be worth the five years, Daddy. I can't talk with you. I can't well, I'm going to tell you something, and you'll better listen and listen good. Because once I get my belt back, 
I done threatened you, and I've done got him working on it. I'm suing you, Jared, because I've had it up to here. I told you the day back when Lawler came back, Russell. Mm, and you, man, you helped bring him back. That's enough. Now, Bill, we can't talk. You just absolutely get insane when you start talking about this. What You're going to you? be in the tournament. But it wasn't going to be. They had to have second thoughts. I wasn't in it till yesterday. And they set the damn thing up after they stole my belt. Okay, okay. Bill Dundee, and it's true that one thing, there will be a tournament, and he will be involved in it. Okay, Bill, have you said all you've got to say? Now, that ain't going to make no difference anyway, Russell, because you're on everybody else's side. But I ain't leaving. I'm staying right here. And I may have said maybe we're hey, five come on, years. Come on now. Well, we're not staying here. We're taking time out, and we're going to be back in just a moment. Action! Wednesday night, brother, I just can't tell you how much action, but I'm going to try. Ten bouts. End of school. Summer school special coming up where all the students get into general admission for just two dollars a ticket. You heard it right. Two dollars a ticket. And by golly, it applies to all general admission seats for students first through the 12th grade. And what do you get for that two bucks? Would you believe this? Ten outstanding matches, including an international tag match, a battle of the brutes, an NWA world's ladies title, a strap match, and hear this, a southern heavyweight tournament that's going to have Bill Dundee, Hustler Rip Rogers, Dutch Mantel, Nature Boy Buddy Landell going for the Southern Belt, Billy. You're oh, yeah, we know we're all going, but it ain't right, Russell, and you know it, and all them geeks out there know it. They took the belt, they handed it to Landell, took it back off Landell, because I went to the NWA, the CWA, and told him and asked him about it, so they knew I was right, and everybody else knows I'm right, so when this tournament takes place, you're looking at the winner, and I don't care what it takes, Mantel, Landell, and Rip, I don't care, brother, if it gets down to you and me, I want the belt back, because I got to prove a point. I believe there's And a if Rippy Rogers, if it gets down to you, come here, Rip, if it gets down to you and me, brother, just come prepared. <laughs> I'm going to be prepared in Evans. I'm going to be prepared for Landale. I'm going to be prepared for Mandale. And even you, Bill Dundee, I'll be prepared for you in Evansville because I'm going to be the new Southern Heavyweight Champion in Evansville. Well, you're talking about some action. That's just one of it. That's the Southern Heavyweight Tournament. Where in the world are you going to get a chance to see four great wrestlers vying for that one title? In addition to that, the strap match with LaDuke and Diamond, the ladies match with Montagas and Debbie Combs, the international tag title defense with Sato and Goto, the mod squad against the Nightmare, and much more all taking place. Two bucks for the students. You've got to be out there Wednesday night. All right, we're ready to go here with tag team action. Keith Eric teamed with the Inferno on one side of the ring, and across the way, it's the Nature Boy, Buddy Landell, and his partner from Oil Trough, Texas, Dutch Mantel. Should be one kind of a powerful tag team over there. Here we go, Landell starting against the Inferno. And, uh... I'm not revealing any deep, dark secret. Mantell and Landell are not the greatest of friends, but uh, <laughs> Landell and Mantell are both professionals, and they end up on the same side of the ring here as partners, and I sure wouldn't want to be one of the guys facing them. Look at that Landell go. Feels him out of there with a big hip toss and takes it over to the Mantell, tags him, and here he comes. Mantell, boot to the midsection. The Inferno finds himself flying into the ropes and feels the upper arm as he came off of there. Dutch Mantell grabs him over to the corner and again he makes the tag. This is Landell. Boy, I tell you, these two guys, both rugged, rugged wrestlers. Good drop kick by Landell, put the Inferno down to the mat. Tagging out quickly. Got some good teamwork going over there right now. The Inferno. Victim of the knee drop. He half fell and half bounced into the corner. It resulted in Keith Airy getting a tag, and that really is all he cared about was getting out of there. <laughs> but I can't say that I blame him. Keith Airy down on the mat now. Dutch Mantel snapped him down, barred the arm. Keith trying to get under the ropes. He does. That means Dutch will have to break the hold. But as he does it, he turns to the corner and tags the nature boy. 
Landell put the boot right into the shoulder socket. Harry complained about pulling his tights. He got him in a fireman's carry throw and flipped him over and barred the arm immediately. So in this instance, no wrongdoing on Landell's part. Now he distracts the referee while the Dutchman holds him from behind and pounds Harry. Well, they're double teaming him over there as uh, the Inferno came in to try to try to help out, and he was sent back to the corner. Mantell with a cover on Eric. Count of one. He picked him up. He didn't uh, didn't try to go for a three count. He grabs the Inferno while he's over in that neighborhood and flips him into the ring. <laughs> with nothing else to do. Everybody in there briefly, but there goes the Inferno, fired out of there by Buddy Landell. Now Mantell. Uh, I don't know what they call that, but it looked mighty effective to me. He leaves Eric he's lying there. Landell drops down. There's a count of one, two, three. Get that Mantell an assist as he kept the Inferno from getting back in there. Two minutes, 46 seconds. Mantell and Landell are going to be the winners. Without a major challenge, they are the winners. We've got more. We'll be back to it in a moment. Oh, I got a minute here, and I do want to tell you that on Thursday, next Thursday, June the 26th, Clarksville, Tennessee, at the Northwest High School, sponsored by the Hilldale Civitan Club, Northwest High School also. Tickets on sale at Lowe's in Clarksville and the Commerce Union Bank. It'll be a night of champions in the Thunderdome 86. Tuesday, July the 1st, Vincennes, Indiana. Championship wrestling coming to the Vincennes University uh, complex. It'll Jerry Lawler will be there. The giant hillbilly will be there. Plenty of action coming up. You want to see it. Let me tell you about Wednesday night. Got 10 matches to run over. Strong Machine, Tracy Smothers in the opener. Dan Stiles in the hunter. Danny Fargo and Pat Tanaka. Mod Squad and the Nightmares. You got to see that one. International Tag Defense. Sato and Goto against Yamamoto and Jarrett. NWA World's title match. Montagas and Combs. A strap match with LaDuke and Diamond. And then the Southern Heavyweight Tournament with Bill Dundee, Dutch Mantel, Buddy Landell, Rip Rogers. Wednesday night for two bucks for students. Three, huh? Two, three. Okay. Had a whale of a six-man tag match that took place in Memphis, Tennessee. And this son of a gun, <laughs> you talking about some firework. It was the giant hillbilly, the heartthrob Austin Idol, and the king Jerry Lawler going against the Mod Squad, and J.D. Costello was their third man. Take a look at these highlights. Basher by the foot sweeps his other leg out of the way and drops with that right hand. Jerry wheeled into the rope, nail coming off, and that spike is a whirlwind. Body slams the king, drops with a leg, hang on Basher. Jerry while the referee now comes over and says back up Basher being squashed by the hillbilly that could put you on a stretcher to say the least to do. All they're saying, let's get him. And they're cutting off his avenues of escape. Idle from one side, Lawler from the other. And J.D. is caught. Thrown into the ring to the hillbilly.
the Las Vegas leg lock, and you better believe that it's all over. 18 minutes, 49 seconds, Idle Lawler and the Hillbilly are the winners. They, they carted him out of there, too. That was a six-man tag match that took place in Memphis, Tennessee. And J.D., well, here he comes right now. He's uh, not looking in the best of shape, I would say that. Lance Russell, this is war. I want everybody at home and in the studio to look at what Jerry Lawler, the giant hillbilly in Austin Idol, did to me. You know... I came to the ring to manage. Spike and Basher came to wrestle professionally. But it's very clear to me, to you, and to all the intelligent fans that Jerry Lawler, Austin Idol, and the giant hillbilly had something else in mind. All they wanted to do was to tie Spike and Basher into the ropes and to get to me, to hurt me, to cripple me, to put me out of professional wrestling forever. Well, the joke's on you because I'm still here today. I'm still manager of the Southern Tag Team Champions. One more thing. I know you've got to have a sick feeling deep inside your gut because you didn't get to me. It's going to take a whole lot more to get rid of me. Give me that microphone, Lance Russell. Move out of the way. Move out of the way because this situation I'm talking about is big. It's huge. It's a critical situation that involves the Mod Squad, Jerry Lawler, Austin Idol, and the giant blob. One promise, not a threat. It's a promise. We're going to hurt you, and we're going to hurt you seriously. I don't care where it is, anytime, any place, any way we can. You're going to get hurt, and you're going to get hurt bad. And all you fans, when you come out to the arenas, you look up in the marquee, and you see in shiny letters J.D. Costello and the Mod Squad here tonight, you rest assured that you're not only going to see a heck of a wrestling match with Lawler, Austin Idol, and the Giant Blob, but you're going to see them get hurt. We're going to hurt them bad. I don't care if it's in the ring. I don't care if it's on the concrete floor. I don't care if it's in the stands with the fans out back or down in the dressing room. We're going to hurt them. We're talking about revenge. And you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt bad. Jerry Lawler, Austin Idol, Giant Hill Billy, you're going to pay because nobody does this to J.D. Costello and gets away with it. Y'all three are going to pay dearly. Up there. Appreciate it if you'd head on to the ring. The Mod Squad, J.D. Costello, heading up for a match in a very sore, and I mean in more than one way, J.D. Costello. Davey? Eight-man tag team action coming up here. We're going to have a ring full, and on one side of the ring, the total weight is 1,081 pounds, over half a ton. And that, of course, is the side where you find the Mod Squad and J.D. Costello's other tag team, Fire and Flame. Referee says ring the bell on the other side of the ring. It's the team of Jerry Garman, Benny Trader, David Haskins, and Jim Jamison. It's Jim Jamison starting against Spike of the Mod Squad. Jamison, body slam. Ooh. Boy, look at the size of that fire and flame. The, the, the mod squad, stocky, really big built guys, and you look at these two guys. Woo, they're huge. Big, big, big. And in the ring now, Basher takes over. You know, Lawler, the hillbilly and idol, they tried to cripple me, Lance Russell. Well, am I in the hospital today? Answer the question. Oh, but you're not in the best shape. In the world. Am I here on TV? You're on TV. Am I still the manager of the best tag team in existence You're today? manager of the Mod Squad, yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. to the dismay of all of you, they didn't get the job done. You know, deep inside, they got to hurt. And I know it hurts you too, Lance Russell, that I'm here today. Oh, well, it doesn't hurt me. Not nearly as much as it looks like it pains you, J.D. Like a cat, I keep landing on my feet every time, man. And in the ring now, it's Flame who makes the tag on who? Basher. Yeah, boy, Benny Trailer, they had him flying across that ring a couple of times. He did get the tag there, though, on uh, David Haskins. You know, it's when we sit here, it's difficult, unless you're looking right at Spike and Basher, to tell which one's in the ring. Yep. There is such a physical similarity between them that if you don't catch them right dead on in the face, it's hard to tell. Fire, 
just nailed Jim Jamison with a clothesline. And Flame lighting out. up. Boy, I'll tell you what, that is awful. Jamison, the recipient of that ball of fire, down goes the referee for a count, and he makes it. But Jamison couldn't care less. Fire and Flame shot the ball of fire right at him. And it's not like they needed that. They had him outmanned all the way. Eddie Marlin coming out to bring a halt to all of the activities out there. No real excuse at all. Two minutes, seven seconds of time on it. And uh, with, with all the size and all the power over on this side of the ring, why do they do that? Well, I'll tell you. I guess as long as we've been around it, we ought to understand them, but I never will, and I guess that is just the truth of the matter, understand that kind of thinking. They end up as the winners, and that is about it. We've got a new name that's coming into the territory. I don't know a whole lot about him. I'm going to find out more along with everybody else. Bam Bam Bigelow. Let's take a look. That's right. It's Larry Sharp. So don't sit there with them stupid looks on your faces wondering what I'm doing on the CWA Wrestling Channel. No, I'm not in New York. No, I'm not in Tokyo. I'm in Memphis. And you want to know why I'm in Memphis? I don't want to be here. I've been all over the world and I've been able to avoid coming to Memphis. But Jerry Lawler had to do something to a very good Italian friend of mine, Mr. Dennis Carluza. Now, I owe that man a favor and he's calling it in. He makes me offers I can't refuse, so now I've got to be here. And Lawler, you're going to pay. Look at this man that I've brought here. I'm telling you, ladies, send your kids out of the room if you don't want them to get scared. And if you want to sleep tonight, you get out of the room too. Because I'm going to show you something you've never seen before in your life. I want you to take a look at Bam Bam Bigelow, the beast from the east. The man that I'm taking to Memphis, Tennessee. And he's going to start kicking with size 16 boots. And he's going to start stomping with 24-inch calves. And he's going to start banging knees and thighs that are 30 inches big with a 40-inch waist and a 52-inch chest. And that's nothing. And the reason you haven't seen his face, this man is so mean his own mother hates him. I don't even like to look at him. But I'm not in this for what I like. I'm in it for bucks. I want you to take a look at what this man is, what he does. Don't forget this face. You're going to be seeing it during the day, during the night. You're going to see it on the street. And Jerry Lawler, your nightmare is just starting. You, and I know, I know how you are, Lawler. You're going to send a bunch of phony geeks in the ring and say he's got to work his way to the top. Well, we'll just smack them and ask for you too. So this is what we're going to do. Take a look at this face. Do you think you stand a chance against a man like this? You're a fool. Look at those flames. We're coming to get you. in this tag team match, the Strong Machine. Strong Machine paired with Libby and Abdul Gaddafi. Diane Hillbilly, of course, with the King, Jerry Lawler. Tag team match coming up here. One fall, 10-minute time limit. Lawler starts against the Strong Machine. Uh, Jerry, you're saying something to the referee about the mask. I don't know if he told him he was going to try to take the mask off or what what the situation was. I don't know either, Dave, but he certainly is making the issue of something. The strong machine. We've seen him before. He's given away weight to the king. He's given away, everybody gives away weight to uh, Brian Hillbilly. Waller. Uh, Waller's going after that mask. Strong machine heads for the corner and gets the tag on big Abdul Gaddafi. Oh, 
Lydia Channing got the crowd fired up here. Lydia Channing, USA, USA. The Libyan fired a right hand, but it's answered with a right fist by Lawler as uh, he just slugged his way out of the corner rather easily, too. Body slam by Gaddafi. Drops down across the chest. There's a cover. Counts a two, but at the two count, Lawler kicks out of it. Gaddafi driving Lawler back into the rope using the shoulder. Lawler body slam, but he moved out of the way before Gaddafi could drop with the elbow. Lawler. Puts a flip on him, and there's the right hand. The giant hillbilly sits down on him and covers this may be it. Two and three. <laughs> it's celebration time for the giant hillbilly and the king. Giant Hillbilly. Okay, before we take time out here, let's have a little tribute to the Universal Heartthrob Austin Idol. looking over this outstanding car for Wednesday. I can't believe it. Let me just tell you some of the particulars on it. Ten matches, that's right. Ten matches and not just any matches, brother. I am talking about Mod Squad against the Nightmares Battle of the Brutes. International tag title. Women's world title coming up. Strap match you're going to be seeing with Diamond and LaDuke. And a Southern Heavyweight Tournament that's going to have Dutch Mantel, Buddy Landell, and it'll be Rip Rogers and Bill Dundee Four of them, great wrestlers, going for that one title. And here is the best part for you students. All students admitted for just $2 to general admission, first through the 12th grade. What a night it's going to be Wednesday. That's right, that's going to be a hell of a night. night. Number one, I guess one of us has got to be a liar because you got four guys coming out here talking about being the Southern Heavyweight Champion, okay? Yeah. Now, Bill Dundee comes out here whining and griping about there's been a great injustice done. Well, there has been a great injustice done, Dundee. 
The injustice was that I let you walk out of the ring last week with your teeth. I should have took them along with that belt, Lance Russell. And the people know that the last two weeks in a row I walked out of that building, the crown, the Southern Heavyweight Champion, all right? Now, Bill Dundee, I'm the one that should come out here being mad as hell because I'm the one getting the shaft, okay? You got the gold mine, baby, and I got the shaft like Jerry Reed said. But let me tell you something. I got Rip Rogers first before I can talk about anything else. I got to beat him and Rip Rogers. Don't tick me off, baby, because I wouldn't give a crippled crab a crutch, Daddy. Remember that. No, that's Buddy Landell's attitude. Mantel will be after that title, My too. attitude is very determined. Now, this car, I've looked at it. Ten big matches, students, two dollars that they can get in. There's going to be a big, big crowd there. And the controversy surrounding Landell and Dundee, which I don't like it for Buddy's sake, but for me, it's good. Because now they've said we're going to have a tournament. That's a right. one night round robin tournament. I got Dundee in the first round. Mm. Now, no secret about it. I don't like you, Dundee, and there's no love lost between us. But when I climb in the ring, baby, I'm fully intending to take you out. Before we get there early Wednesday night, you want to see it. Handicap match for Joe today. He will be going against uh, Henry Rutledge and Mike Murphy. Mm -hmm. And um, nope, nope, change. Going to be going against uh, David Johnson. David and Johnson and Mike Murphy. Okay, Dave. All right, this is going to be a one fall, ten minute time limit match. Handicap rules in effect. David Johnson and Mike Murphy. Except now, last time we had a handicap match. There's Big Joe LaDuke, boy, from Montreal at 286 pounds, and. The strap he's got there yeah, is, is, is one that's used in a strap match where you put somebody on each end of it, you know. Joe brought it out here with him. Well, it's, it is going to be both of them in there at the same time. That's the way Joe likes it in these handicap matches. Normally, under handicap rules, you go against one at a time, but not Joe. Has them both in there at the same time. David Johnson fired into the ropes. Mike Murphy back on his feet only to be chopped down again. Look at Johnson, throwing the fist, no effect. Mm. This is not gonna take very long. I don't think so. Leduc snaps him up and over and down. He is grabbed Rutledge by the throat. Uh. Kicks David Johnson in the ribs. Boy, I'll tell you what. He is murdering these two young guys. The Duke slanting Johnson's head into that turnbuckle. Knee lift. Mike Murphy gets the knee lift, too. Oh, Johnson off the ropes. Down to the mat he goes. LaDuke, just standing over them. He's doing whatever he wants to do. There's that drop kick from the incredible Joe LaDuke. David Johnson swinging away at him. Not much contest here. Joe grabs him by the throat. Oh, man, man. LaDuke. Has them both down. One, two, three. Took care of them in one pin, Joe. Yep. Dave. Minute 50 seconds was the time on it, and Leduc pins both of them at the same time to take the win in this handicap match. The winner in a minute 50 seconds, Joe Leduc. Henry Rutledge, David Johnson will go away and return another day, but they hope not against Joe Leduc. As Joe really murdered those two guys in that handicap match. And the handicap was on the side of the uh, Johnson and, and Rutledge in there. You don't know what murder is. And it's Russell. <laughs> Paul Diamond. I want to tell you something, Russell. Why don't you let everybody in from the night? They're all freeloaders anyway. Paul Diamond. You know something, boy? I call you boy because you're not a man. And I'm not through with you yet. You know something? Last week, you think you did a good thing when you attacked me from behind. Remember one thing. 
Paul Diamond, I'm your mentor. I'm the one that teaches you how to become a man. I'm the one that's going to teach you when you get at the end of this strap here, you're not going to be able to attack me from behind and break a garbage can on my head because look at the scars on my head. I don't care. You know, I've been in the gutter. My money comes from the street. And when I say something, I do it. Now, why don't you shut up? Let's rush those other people. <laughs> so, look, you said you're going to teach me to be a man. Well, I was already a man. But you taught me one thing. Yeah, it works to attack somebody from behind, Joe. Now let me tell you something. This is not over yet. I'll be after you every chance I get, brother. Paul Diamond, who came roaring in and slipped in behind. Joe LaDuke kicked him right in the throat as he nailed him with that side kick. <laughs> Joe LaDuke, who was kicked right smack in the throat on that side kick by Paul Diamond. Woo. Boy, he near playing rough, is what you call it. Paul Diamond, he remembers being attacked from behind himself, and he has no hesitation. As he said, Joe LaDuke taught him one thing. He taught him that it's effective when you do it, because that's the way he got Diamond's hair cut. Hey, let's take a look at what the CWA is going to be doing on tour this week. CWA Championship Wrestling Association on tour. And the action hit Huntsville, Alabama on Friday, July the 11th with the Austin Idol. On Thursday, July 10th at the Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, a school's out special featuring Austin Idol and Jerry the King Lawler. Then the action is in Vincennes, Indiana for the kicking off of the big 4th of July festival. July the 1st at Vincennes University, Jerry the King Lawler and the Giant Hillbilly. Thursday, June 26th at Greenwood, Mississippi in the Civic Center, we bring you a night of champions featuring an international title match, a southern title match, and a ladies world title match, plus Thunderdome 86. This coming Wednesday night at the Evansville Coliseum in Evansville, Indiana, a school's out special featuring Bill Dundee, Dutch Mantell, Buddy Landell, and Paul Diamond. This coming Tuesday night at the Louisville Gardens in Louisville, Kentucky, a school's out special featuring everybody. And now tonight in Nashville, Tennessee, at the Fairgrounds Arena, you will see the Southern Tag Title Match and the Ladies World Title Match, plus a no holds barred brutal hospital elimination match. Tickets available at all usual locations. You've seen the rest. Now see the best. See the best. Brought to best. you by the Championship Wrestling Association on tour. In the ring right now, it is Paul Diamond and his partner, Mr. Liberty. Going to be going against a brand new tag team that we have not seen here before. Here they come right now. And they make their way up to the ring. These are the dirty black boys with uh, with their manager in their corner. Don't know the manager, don't know the dirty black boys, and I've never seen Diamond and Mr. Liberty together, so ooh, this could be an interesting match. It's going to be to the expiration of time. We'll see what happens here. We will learn something about it. We'll have to call them number one and two. I don't know any other... Any other thing, not the biggest guys in the world. Diamond, uh, very distinct size superiority. Referee Jerry Calhoun says, let's break it up. And it is a good, clean break. Paul Diamond, all decked out in the uh, commando gear there. Ooh. Diamond for it. You know, he's big. 
He is big. I mean, he, he, he's deceptively big, I guess is the way to put it. And he can flat give you some outstanding moves. Mr. Liberty, I've seen him once before, Dave. Good, solid wrestler. He just is, he's not the most spectacular thing in the world. He, he, he is just very, very solid. Good body slam. Yeah, held his balance, got everything ready, and just slammed him right down there. Good, good, powerful slam. Mr. Liberty making the tag. Here's Paul Diamond back in. New team called the Dirty Black Boys making a tag. Count is one. One count is all Paul Diamond gets. Thought he might have had it there for a moment. Coming up on the two-minute mark of the match, Paul Diamond. Nice move there. Counts at two, but he can't make it stick for a three count. On Mr. Liberty takes it over and comes in boom double whip double backdrop Woo! Oh, they pitched it way up well and all the way to the corner well, you're right Mr. Liberty not flashy but flash doesn't always win wrestling matches sometimes I guess you can you can uh, distract your opponent a lot with it but uh, good solid wrestling there's no no substitute for it and Mr. Liberty showing that right here you look at the things just like that suplex they are very soundly done he's got the fundamentals right he's, he's a good one Paul Diamond. Paul Diamond Paul out of Thunder Bay Ontario Up right in uh, right in southern Canada very near the United States border Paul with a new uh, commando type attire. Yeah, kind oh. of a kind of the new look there, I guess. I think Paul. he, since his hair was cut off by Joe LaDuke, he figured he'd take advantage of the short hair and come up with a new look. And he's the kind of guy that can make it stick too. Boy, he has got a lot of very, very outstanding moves. A little interference from outside there. Again, it looked like Paul might have a three count and have, uh, have this ball wrapped up. But it didn't work out that way. Here's Mr. Liberty back in. Three minutes, 30 seconds into the action. <laughs> Mr. Liberty got the arm up behind his back in a hammer position. Ooh. Liberty really working on that left arm. He tags out. Look out! Watch a Joe LaDuke and the Mod Squad, all of them jumping in the ring. And that's going to stop this one right here. Your official winners are going to be uh, the tag team that just got jumped here. Talking about Paul Diamond and Mr. Liberty. Mod Squad working on Mr. Liberty and LeDuc after Paul Diamond. He's got that uh, six-foot strap wrap wrapped around his throat. LeDuc just really choking him there. You can see he's got him bent back over the rope. And all 286 pounds of LeDuc's weight holding on him there. Jerry Garman, Van Van Horn, and a bunch of other folks in to help out. John Stewart over there, the Beach Boys. They finally hammer on LaDuke. It doesn't look like they hurt him, but at least they oh, got they him back over there. Yeah. But they did get him to back away as he was really hanging down on Paul Diamond with that strap around his throat. LaDuke. Came in with the mod squad, interrupted the match, and it's going to be a disqualification. Uh, so Paul Diamond and Mr. Liberty will win that first fall. We've got more time. We'll take time out and be back in a moment.
we got it all in, almost Ooh, all of it. We got to go day. until next week for Dave Brown, Lance Russell saying bye-bye, everybody.